What's up, everyone? I don't know, it's like almost 3 a.m. and I'm bored and I just... I'm gonna play some Donkey Kong. First of all, I'm gonna do something. Ew, bilinear filtering. Hold on. Alright. We're, we're gonna do this as close to how I remember as possible. Alright, do we want the scan lines or not? We'll see. It's got like a wavy look to it. I'm like that. That's not how the game looked when I was a kid. Then again, it's not going to look the way it looked when I was a kid. You know what? Whatever. Yeah. I'm old enough to remember when this game was brand new. It really was pretty mind-blowing. Ah, I missed it. Oh, we're off to a good start. No, if you, you know, it looks a little bit better when you turn on the filter, because it looks more like it's intended. Especially with games around this era that have a more pre-rendered look to it, having the big old chunky pixels could be a little bit of a detriment to it. This is fun. Well, it's supposed... Oh, yeah, well. Oh, Look at Diddy just... I can't get that barrel back? Nope, apparently not. There are other parts in this game where you can do that, though. Wait a minute. Oh, no, I guess not. I, I was thinking, uh... I must have tried that, though, when I was a kid before, but I was thinking, like, I could go into the... into the Banana Horde cave and come back out and get the same extra lives over and over. Rareware is too good of programmers to let you do that, though. feel like talking too much while doing this just because I got a microphone doesn't mean I have to constantly yammer on so 
down here? Yes. I've never 100%ed this game, and I don't think I ever will. You know, the older I get, the more I relate to Cranky Kong. Sometimes our sprites used to change size for no apparent reason. We never had any of this fancy 3D stuff. Oh no, we had to survive on what we had. And what little we did have, we were happy with. I've never seen anything like it. Enjoy this demo while you can. It can't last much longer. What do you mean demo? That's right. Four shades of gray and a two by two character block. That's all we had. Go bananas in the snake pit of the road. Reptile rumble. Alright, yeah. Enough of you. I, I am at that. I'm 35 years old, so I'm at that that weird age where I'm not like young, young, but I'm not old. But, you know, I'm at that weird age where like young people you talk about your childhood to like younger people and they're like you're so old but then like you run across people who are like in their 40s and 50s and they're like oh you're just a baby still they're just like i'm cool with that As a kid, platformers were always, like, my favorite kind of game. It's what I started out with, like... I can't remember the first video game I ever actually played. But I'm pretty sure it was Super Mario Bros. I do remember growing up, the first, uh... The first game systems I had more access to were the Super Nintendo and eventually Sega Genesis. The Super Nintendo was the family system. The Sega Genesis was my birthday present. I had to have it. It was mine. I think I was like around seven years old or so. I'm sorry, I'm just enjoying the music. Aquatic Ambience is so good.
fucking David Wise. shake bananas I don't know why they're frog shaped bananas and then this yeah that automatically doubles it I could have waited a little while and got more out of it but eh Get to 600. Yes. That's six extra lives. Good. That, that's good. We're learning. Oops. There we go. There we go. This really was like one of my favorite games growing up. I'm, I'm just disappointed in myself because I should not be losing lives this early in the game. Like, this game cranks up the difficulty quite a bit. In later levels. I should not be losing lives on level 1. That, that just... There 
There we go. That's what I meant to do. Candy Kong. Sorry, I just wanted to hear the music. I have headphones on too, so... I see you. thought that was such the boss rooms in this game are just like all the bananas and that's just an amazing visual it really would be so cool if they would remake this game with like HD pre-renders but there's a there's a fine line between doing something like that and making it look good versus making it look like cheesy. Oh, more. More great music, by the way. Very, very good, very ambient. I can listen to this song just on its own while contemplating stuff. Some of these are easier for getting extra lives than others. Right. Lord knows how I knew it, how I learned how to get this, but. Probably a magazine or something. I had a lot of uh, tips and tricks magazines. And also like the early days of the internet. It's like the... One of the best things you could do on early internet was look up cheat codes and strategies and stuff. calling it here. I'm calling it. The infamous minecart. Calling it right here. First try. First try.
the only reason I can claim something so bold. You know I've done this like a hundred freaking times in my life. Not even worth it. Oh. We're getting all the animal buddies. Two. I've always wondered why the water in this bonus round is blood red. There used to be fish in here. Used to be. What, what was the swordfish's name again? I honestly can't remember. And I also can't remember where the, uh... Where the 2x thing is in this level. do this again, but I oh won't. Well. Like I said, first try. I got my anus nice and puckered for this. No unnecessary risks. Unless I'm very confident in myself. Ah, I missed the end. Oh well. I'm telling you, I got this down almost down completely to muscle memory at this point. See, that's what we call karma. Karma likes to come in sometimes and knock you down a peg when your hubris is too big. And, wow, there we go. Still, first try. I took a hit, but oh well. but it feels like the timer goes way faster in this one than it does in any of the, of the other ones. And I don't even know if there's enough time now to try and get the 2x thing. It doesn't really matter because... 43 extra lives. And this is one of those games where you need them too. Trained when it comes to platformers. 
You know, I always think about this, but, uh, I mean, video games as an art, as a medium, are still, like, relatively new. And I was born in 1988, so, like, the ass end of the 8-bit era. So, like, you know, j just like, just imagine. Just imagine being around. Like, film, for instance. Probably the second. The film is roughly over a hundred years old or so at this point. Maybe more. Animation, too. Like... Just, you know, I think about... Just imagine being around... It must have been crazy to, like... Be in, like, the 1930s... And see the original greats when they were brand new. Yeah. Problems with being that far into the past aside. You, you know. Socio-political problems of the time that I don't think anyone wants to go back to, but hey, cartoons. But just think about... You know, being alive... When... Think about this for a second, like... What ha Who was, like, the first people to come up with, like, painting? Like... Get a stick with some bristles on it. You know, we got cave paintings. Those were probably done by, like, by hand with, like, rocks. Wait, wait. Oh! Did you see that? Risk taken, risk worth it. <laughs> Told you, classically trained. And ju just like video games were like, you know, especially back in the day, people were like, oh, those, those are just like toys for kids, you know. What's weird is animation kind of did that in reverse. Like, it started out, like, for adults. Or just, like, shit that people made up, came up with because they liked doing it. And it was just really impressive that they could. And then, I think sometime around the 60s or so... The Hanna-Barbera days. Or, more specifically, like when television was becoming more mainstream, I think. And, you know, the Hanna-Barbera days of, like, they just became, like, this workshop of animation. Like, this never-ending machine of cartoons. And they were all, like, Mostly super family friendly stuff. And 
I think that's where the stigma came from. Of cartoons being for kids specifically. You know what? That bird always hits me. Oh, that's satisfying. Think of how old this game is, and then think about the premise of Cranky Kong as a character, who, besides sort of giving you hints and tutorializing you if you want, also complains about how these newfangled video games and their fancy color graphics and their multi-button controllers. It's kind of funny to think about. That's just like, just how brand new and like mind blowing this game was for its time. Like, this was around the time we were just like, you know, we, we were sort of putting all the bleep bloops in the past and being like, yeah, well, fuck that. Here's like some real graphics that actually look like stuff. And music sounds and music like this shit was mind blowing it's like subtle and atmospheric from the bleep bloops of games just a few years before. Oh, this. We can do this. I did that video of my Super Nintendo stuff a little earlier. It's already uploaded by the time I'm recording this, but... Ah! I even saw it coming, too. I just felt like recording something, and... I was like, what's a game that I like that I can just play and... Is something I'm decently good at that'll still give me a decent challenge. Something my 3 a.m. brain can easily digest. Donkey Kong. Ah. 
I, I have ideas for videos in the future. And hopefully I'm gonna start uh, hopefully I'm gonna start finding more of my own niche I know it's not just gonna be one thing The idea of my channel has always been I just do what I want. And hopefully people find it interesting. And if not, it's still amazing. You know what else is amazing? My incredible gaming skills. You know, honestly, I should go pro. I should go pro. I'm so good at games, you know? I've been playing them all my life. I, I never lost a life in any game ever, you know? There we go. You know, technically, and it, it, this is something I wanted to, like, make a few videos about, is uh, I'm technically on the autism spectrum, but the reason I bring that up now is because a lot of people on the spectrum, like, have trouble with things like sarcasm. Not me. I love it. I think that I had to learn sarcasm manually as a kid, if that makes any sense. And then it just became fun. As it turns out, being a smartass is kind of fun sometimes. If I see anyone in the comments typing shit, like, you're not really autistic. I don't care. That That's the fun thing about being in my mid-30s, is I don't care anymore. I don't care what you have to say. I don't care about your opinion. It, it, it's, it's quite liberating, actually. I've had enough embarrassment in grade school as it is. I've gotten all my cringe out of my system. Most of it. I guess it could have been, but I got almost 50 lives, so it don't really matter. Another thing I love is metaphors and wordplay. I mean, I can't, I can't just give you an example on the spot. You know, it's got to come naturally. I love bad puns. You know what? 
I do like sarcasm, but at the same time, I do find myself sometimes, still to this day, sort of having trouble figuring out if someone's being serious or not. Like I said, it's the process of learning this shit manually, because I... My, my brain doesn't have this stuff pre-wired in it, if that makes sense. That, that was a hard secret. That, you know what, I don't know how anyone ever figured this one out. See, I, I think that's why whenever I'm sarcastic, I consciously make the effort to make sure that whatever I'm saying is so dumb and ridiculous that no one could possibly take me seriously. You know, I think my channel's just gonna have a whole lot of this. Just me playing a game and sort of just talking about whatever's on my mind. It might be a retro game, it might be something new, it might be might be Minecraft. Minecraft's an easy one to do. There's a stereotype for you. Someone on the autism spectrum likes Minecraft. Stop the presses. My really old friend, she's not really old, but she's my old friend, like, I've, I've known her for like ever. She got me into Minecraft. And we still talk, like, a lot. We still use Skype also, and I don't fully understand that, because I have her number, she has my number, I don't know why... She just wants to use Skype, but I'm like, yeah, whatever. Could use Discord, I suppose, but that's one of those, uh... I'm getting to a point where... Uh, the old saying... Old dogs and new tricks, something, something to that effect. As my brain gets older and more set in its ways. Which reminds me of just, I think technology is designed specifically to leave old people behind. Get my tinfoil hat on here for a second. Because, like, they keep changing shit, like, all the time. For example. And I, I don't think Game game Maker... Game Maker is a program that I used to make games for, like, years. Way back in high school, all the way up till now. If I could sit my happy ass down and actually focus on something. But, I got into using Game Maker back in version 6, I believe. Way, way before, like, the studio and Studio 2. And eventually, the one I used 
to make Dream Cherry, which is, like, it was going to be my magnum opus. But nowadays I look back at it and I feel like I can definitely do better. I, I, I will never understand whatever part of my early 20 year old brain thought 40 frames a second was a good idea. But, yeah, Game Maker. The interface has stayed relatively the same. Up until they changed it to, like, Studio 2, and now it... I, I, I guess it's different to fit alongside other modern game development tools and programs. But, my muscle memory... It's not that I can't learn. Because I have, you know, fiddled around with it and figured out how to do things I already knew how to do in the old version of Game Maker. Mainly, you know, make platform games because I just really enjoy platform games. I started when I started uh, dicking around with making games on the computer, it was click and play. If you if you know what that is. But basically, it's an older version of uh, what's it called? I think they're calling it Multimedia Fusion now. And it's the shit that uh, Scott Cawthon used to make FNAF games. I remember learning that and being like, oh shit. And the last time, like, I downloaded a demo. Several years ago. And, like, the interface is largely unchanged. Last I checked. It could be different now, but... It was still like the same structure. But I started using click and play and made some poopy platform games. I remember specifically making like Mega Man fan games. Not because I was a particularly huge Mega Man fan. I mean, yeah, I do enjoy Mega Man. I probably appreciate the games more now than I did back then, but... Well, that was just... That was just a very special kind of amazing, wasn't it? But because, you know... It's a relatively simple game to try and mimic the gameplay style of doesn't really have any complex momentum based physics the shooting is very straightforward he just shoots forward it literally straightforward I love how the music seems to always get more tense at this exact moment when the blizzard really starts. There, there's no way you could actually time that programming the game without making it completely an auto-scroller, but the way the level is designed
as long as you're not dicking around too much, it, it usually ends up happening just like that. These barrels are a little bit trickier. But, we can do this. We can do this. some really nice CGI, you know? The background looks nice. For early 90s, if you don't know, like, the get, uh, the graphics in this game are made using the same computer software, it, rendering computers of the time that Toy Story was made in, the silicon graphics, Computers. I'm not kidding. I don't know. Like that. That was more or less the 3D software of the time. You need like ridiculous supercomputers, and like a full ass animation could take like a week to render fully. No, no. This one may take me a few more tries. The secret is not to let it get to me. If I overthink it, that's when problems start to happen. This level is going to look really good uploaded to YouTube. I tell you what. Bitrate. Wonderful bitrate. Isn't there isn't there a shortcut in this one somewhere? I think there's a shortcut in this level. That lets you like skip all of that. I'm just Exactly a shortcut, but it's something. Okay. Bye. <laughs> the bit the 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 bitty the ditty barrel see i mm, i'm gonna lose more lives just trying to find the secret it's probably not even in this level i want to at least get to the ice cave because it's a pretty level and i like the music all right for real this time back away from the screen a little bit so I can take it in a little more. Son of a bitch. I don't know if you can hear that or not, it sounds like it's storming out there. 
I can hear it through the headphones. Hopefully it's not too distracting. I, I have a... I got... Oh! 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 Found a secret. Yeah, sometimes I'll do videos like this, and sometimes I'll do videos a little more focused, a little more editing. I, I don't want to say that, like, you know, I've complained a little bit on this channel about, like, you know. Give me a second. I, I gotta focus on this first, and then I'll tell you what I was thinking. I've complained about like the state of YouTube these days and the clickbait and the jingly keys editing style, that's what I like to call it. Because it's like, you know, constantly fighting for your attention with like aggressive editing and stuff. And I, I don't want to say, like, editing videos in itself is inherently an evil thing. But, like, you know, people like Mr. Beast and stuff have that shit down to, like, a science. The exact amount of time a, a, a scene needs to be on screen. Before you cut to something else to key to, a uh, retain viewer retention. You know, that kind of thing. Just, like, the sheer manipulative nature of it. And a lot of YouTubers who aren't nearly as big as someone like Mr. Beast. Basically having to adhere to these rules in order to get any kind of success at all. I'm not saying... And at one point or another, I think, I think that, you know... I don't want to call it clickbait. If you're trying to make a thumbnail that makes your video look interesting and worth clicking on... That's just... That's advertising, honestly. And there's a difference between good advertising and manipulative bullshit. Even YouTubers I like are like doing this shit. I just watched a video, who was it called? Who was it? It was a video about... Uh, what was it about? I can't remember now. I just got done watching it before I started recording this, too. Good. Look, I'm telling you, I am just the best at video games. I should... I should just give up everything else and become a professional gamer, I'm telling you. Ugh. It was one of those videos, it'll come to me, but... Oh, it was for the game Hatred. I, I forget whose video it was, but the title was like... The most controversial video game ever made. And like, even in that video, the dude... Admits that that was more or less just... Uh, clickbait. But the video was actually, like, really well thought out and 
talking about this game that I I almost didn't click on that just because of the clickbait. Like, no, fuck you. Like, you, you can't just jingle the keys in my face and expect me to laugh and clap. Like, almost in... Have I ever figured out what, what, what this rope is doing? I don't know. But then I saw it was like over an hour long, and I was like, Oh, wait a minute. Because first of all, I remember when Hatred first came out, and the consensus that I had when that game came out was... It's edgy. Very edgy, like comically edgy. And, you know, I have it. I think I, had, I bought it on sale. It's fine as a game. The subject matter, dark, edgy, very try hard. But. In its time, I know there was some controversy. I didn't know that, like... There there were a lot of people, like, just trying to get it banned before it even came out. Stuff like that. But what, what I was saying was, like, I remember the general consensus, at least from what I saw on the internet at the time, was, you know, this game trying to, trying to be controversial and edgy, while most people looked at it and just said, Dude, we've been desensitized to this kind of violence since, like, the 90s. <laughs> Like, just collectively, most people I saw just yawned and said, what else you got? <laughs> but, yeah, uh, there, there was more going on about that game than I was aware of. I don't usually like to play that kind of game where it's like, you know, mindless killing for the fun of it. Usually... You know, I'm the kind of guy who purposefully dodges people in Grand Theft Auto games. I find that to be more fun. Than just mindlessly mowing people over. But in a game like Hatred or like Postal, specifically Postal 1, which I think is a far more disturbing game just because of like how it presents itself and how it kind of invites you into the mind of the Postal Dude, whereas the, ha as the Hatred Dude, Mr. Not Important himself, is just like edgy for edgy sake but in postal one there's like sort of a story subtext going on about mental illness and it's disturbing and it's dark and it's supposed to be disturbing and dark And when I play a game like that, it's not so much about me immersing myself in, like, putting myself in the shoes of the protagonist, or I guess I should say antagonist.
but like... It's just kind of a character study, in a way, and like, sort of observing the feelings that the game makes me feel. You know, you feel like, I, you know, any normal sane person would play a game like that and at least feel a little bit like shit for being such a relentless, ruthless, needless killer. Sometimes a game would, like, play it off with comedy. Which is what the video was talking about, like, you know, hatred. Like, a lot of people thought the game was taking itself too seriously, but... Nah, I don't, I don't think so. Like... It's, it's like a 13-year-old Edgeboard's idea of a video game. Not to say that it's bad, it, it has its problems. I don't know, while we're talking... Oh, oh no, oh no. This is the 1.0 version of this game where I'll, I'll try and keep the turning to a minimum because. But also, you know, just so you know, I can't avoid it. I can't avoid it. You know, epilepsy, epilepsy warning. Just kind of. If you're watching this, chances are if you've watched this far, you're. Either putting it on the background while you do something else, which is fine. I don't mind that. Putting on a sleep aid. I, I would consider that a compliment. If my voice is soothing enough to fall asleep to. And my microphone situation isn't complete shit. Well, anyway, it's over. So, there it is. I would say I, I'll just go ahead and beat this game while I'm doing this. It's 4 a.m. Uh. I would say that I would beat this game, but it's been a while. I'm a little out of practice, and I don't know how much patience I'm going to have for like the last couple of worlds. Final boss ain't too bad. It's just memorizing the patterns and also not doing stupid shit like that. You know what? Fuck it. Let's just, let's put Donkey Kong Country on my list of games I've completed while recording. Let's go ahead and do that. I want to do more long form videos like this anyway. You know, because if I try and do like a video where uh, I want to make it a multi-parter, I, I, I lose interest pretty quickly. I, I got that. You know, among my spicy brain, I 
you know, I, I just got, I, I, I'm on the spectrum, I got ADHD, I just, I, I just got the whole neurodivergent starter kit. <laughs> I don't mind it, honestly. I don't consider it a mental illness. I think most people on the spectrum don't. I think that most of us have like an appreciation for like... The angle, the unique angle we look at life, the unique lens we look at life through. hear some people going like, wouldn't you like to just be normal? And I'm just like, why? That's no fun. I really should have been paying more attention. The pattern is not that difficult. Just hit him five times every time he jumps one more high than he did the last. Usually in games like this, even if I mess up like that, I learn from my mistakes pretty quickly. I was going to say, no, we're already at the last world. No, we're not. But we are. On arguably one of my favorite music tracks in the whole game. Fear Factory. Speaking of being on the spectrum, I've heard that, you know, people, people on the autism spectrum, particularly musicians and, like, people who are musically inclined, tend to fuck up at minigames on Donkey Kong Country, but also, you gotta have a sense of humor, you know, but also, uh, we tend to like repetitive sounds. You, you hear the little ambient sound in the back. To... Yeah. I, I do that kind of thing a lot in my own music. Where I would take like a sound and kind of have it just playing on repeat while the rest of the song just does its thing. I tried to do the rolling thing. That's that's what that was. I tried to do the roll jump. For no other reason than style points. And I did it again. Like I said, I'm really good at learning from my mistakes. I, I'm just sitting here like, there's no way, there's no way that that shit's gonna happen a fourth time. Here, you get in front. 
Like I said, I ain't too worried about getting all the secrets here. I'm just, just chilling, just playing the game. If you can't tell, I really love, like, music, especially video game music. Some will say, like, you know, that's not really a genre of music. You know what, fuck you. It is too. Video game music is unique in that, with, with like, more, uh, I guess, contemporary music, it's just the song itself. And when you're dealing with, like, you know, say, a movie or a play or something, the music is, you know, meant to accompany what's going on in front of you. Usually the song's being sung or whatever. Sort of explaining the character's feelings and all that. And, you know, the orchestral music in a big scene in a movie or whatever typically is designed specifically for that exact scene and is timed specifically ooh that was close to accompany that scene A video game music it's a little bit different. There's a little bit of a challenge that has to be uh, surpassed. Because the music has to feel correct. Typically you go with like the atmosphere of the level itself. The uh, typical vibe of the game itself. But, you cannot write music for a video game that perfectly aligns with the action on screen. Eventually, you have to let go of control. Unless that game is like an auto-scroller where everything happens timed exactly as it's supposed to. Or, you create a ridiculously elaborate algorithmic program that makes the music change its tone depending on how well you're doing, like, you know, Doom Eternal or something like that. This is around the point of the game where things get really tricky and most people like really struggle. And don't worry, there's going to be a few parts where I struggle my ass off. that up. I was wondering if I could still get up there. Doesn't look like it. I think... Nah. Nah, oh, well. Yeah. I think there are enough games that I know how to play from start to finish like this. Or can... bang my head against the metaphorical brick wall until one of us cracks. 
to make more videos like this. I I, I just kind of want it want to make it just kind of personal, not like too personal. I'm not gonna get on <laughs> get on the mic and be like, "Woo, boy, I have not showered in days, and I reek." I'm kidding though, but you you know what I mean. <laughs> anyway, here's my browser history. As you can see, I'm really into feet. <laughs> Again, kidding. Sometimes you have to emphasize that. And again, if you don't believe me, I don't really care. But no, like... I, I, I want my channel to be, like, cozy. Like, like, you're tuning in for a nice, chill time. Just playing a game. Maybe learn a thing or two about me. Cause, you know, I'm on, I, I'm on, I'm recording, I'm talking with the microphone and all that. I'm gonna talk about some personal stuff every now and then. Just my likes, my dislikes, pet peeves. Opinions on certain things. It, it just comes with the territory Poison pond speaking of this level Just the idea that the pond is poison like sort of Unnerved me as a kid Hardly anything in a video game really outright scared me as a kid, but I was unnerved by a lot of things but in a way that made me fascinated by them. So, for instance, you know, this is called Poison Pond. That means we got two bipedal mammalian creatures swimming in this shit. Lord knows what it actually is. I'm, t I'm assuming there's at least a little bit of nuclear waste in here somewhere. There's definitely like an environment. Rare really seems to like their environmental messages in their games, you know? Sonic is another one of those game franchises that started out with like heavy environmental messaging in it. Evil Dr. Robotnik using his robots for world domination. Powering his robots with little animals inside of them just, just to be extra evil. Like we have plenty of other power sources, but no small woodland creatures. It satisfies his god complex, I guess. I, th I always thought it was kind of cool, though, because Tails, as a character, comes around, and he does machines, too, but he uses technology for, like, good stuff, so it's like, the Sonic universe isn't just trying to sit here and, like, preach at you, like, technology bad, because, I mean, first of all, you're playing a video game. Can't really be an anti technology extremist. Then again, the way some people are hypocritically. You know, you know how it is.
trying to focus here. Yay! Really? Is that what ha what, what's happening? These weird spinning spike tire things are so... They're so well animated, aren't they? This game's definitely got that, like, early CG uncanny valley-ness to it. But, like, even then... Holds up visually well compared to a lot of other things of the time. You know? Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong look. I. Wow. Wow. Okay. What I was gonna say is they look reasonably realistic. I mean, cartoony still, but like, you know. The fine line between realistic and cartoony. I do think I want to try and be Diddy Kong for as long as I can here, just because he's got the smaller hitbox. Like, graphics like this, pre-render stuff, always had this, like, uncanny valley look to him that, as a kid, was a little unnerving to me. But again, in a way that, like, fascinated me. You know, you know what's an odd thing that, uh... I sort of started thinking about not too long ago is other things that unnerved me as a kid in video games. And this might sound silly, I, I, I was looking for a way to describe it. Okay, alright, alright, okay. Uh, too many fish! Too many fish. Um, something else that unnerved me. It wasn't even necessarily something that's scary specifically. But, in video games where... The best way I can describe it is characters, enemies, or other sorts of entities in a game that have more AI than usual. And it sounds silly today because AI is like ridiculous. But like The, uh, when I was real, real, real little, the, uh, Charging Chucks, the football dudes in Mario, Super Mario World, they, they seemed, you know, the Goombas just walk left and right and all that, like, the Charging Chucks, like, do stuff, they, like, think, you know? I mean, obviously, clearly, you know, they're just programmed to do what they do. But... Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong, you and me are gonna throw hands. And you're probably gonna win, because you're a gorilla. 
but it's almost 4.30 in the morning. I'm getting tired. So there's a save. I'm gonna save here. We're gonna do this old school. No save states. But uh, I'll come back to this. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed my ramblings. And I don't I don't like saying this, but because at this point everyone already knows, like like, comment, subscribe, all that happy bullshit. Don't want to sit here and beg you for it or anything, but if you've already made it this far in the video, and you hear, you hear my wrapping it up tone in my voice, getting ready to click off of it or whatever, but, it, it, you know, if you would do that, if you would just, you know, any, any number of those three things, it would mean a lot to me. Like, you know, if you have something to say about my ran my random ramblings, and go ahead and let me know, because not only does it help my channel out, but it's just nice, you know, to have a have a conversation with people, people all over the world, really. You come on here randomly from like England. And you're like, actually, when I was a kid, blah, 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 Super Nintendo. Like, I love that. Tell me, tell me about your childhood experience with gaming or anything else for that matter. Just, you know, the, the interaction is just nice. It's nice and I think that that's, that's like the cool part of YouTube is... It is, in itself, in a way, a form of social media. And... Keyword social. And that's where we're at. You know? I can make videos, you can make videos. We can all make videos, and we can all watch each other, and we can all leave comments on each other, and live in harmony ideally anyway of course you know harmony ain't that easy to achieve I, I ain't trying to come off as some sort of uh, philosophical guru playing a monkey game <laughs> Here, but you know anyway thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed and I hope you have a good rest of your day